let me introduce you. This is Joyce Pike, um, oil painter of America Master. Joyce and I met in April 2016 at a Sunday service just after Easter. I'd been asked to preach by the local pastor who was ill that day. And the story I chose to give was the story of the resurrection. As I preached the story of believing that my daughter, who had lost her battle with cancer a few years earlier, was in heaven, I glanced down and noticed that Joyce was crying slightly. So after the service, I went up to her and I said, Joyce, uh, I'm sorry if I caused you to cry. And she said, no, no, these were not tears of sadness. These were tears of joy. I lost my son, Bob, to cancer a um, number of years earlier. And I was picturing him meeting Stephanie in heaven. <laughs> it was a bit of a shock. And then she turned to me and said, can I paint your daughter? And I said, no, I didn't want to let anybody. And she looked at me strangely and said, uh, no, I'm a real painter. In fact, it turns out she's one of the top artists in this country. And she pointed to a painting on the wall, which is a picture of Jesus and a sparrow, and said, I painted that. Well, to make that story short, over the next three months, we got together a number of times and we painted the painting that's out in the front there, which is Stephanie meeting Jesus with her son Bob in the background. And when we'd finished, she said to me, I want to do some more painting. And I said to her, oh, I have a 12-step recovery program. She's unfaced, said, well, then I'll do 12 paintings, one for each step. So I said, well, that would be wonderful. She said, what should we paint? And I thought, let's paint the parables. Recovery begins when one person tells their story to another. So what better than to see the stories Jesus told? And that's how these 12 paintings came to be. But she's a very special person. The next Tuesday when I went to see her, she'd already bought all 12 canvases and was standing brush in hand saying, where do we start, where do we go? And so for the next 18 months we met almost every Tuesday to read scriptures, pray together, and to do these 12 paintings that you see surrounding us. What do you think about that? I think it's absolutely right. But I also have to tell you that this was God's work, <laughs> not just mine and Alex's. This was the Holy Spirit of God that says, Joyce, you were given a talent when you were six years old for a purpose, and this talent is for you to do all of these visual scriptures. Now, if you will check the scriptures that I have painted the paintings from, you will see that I left nothing out. Everything was put in these paintings. That's the Spirit of God working through me with my talent, allowing us to visually see the parables of Christ. Now, Christ taught in parables because they didn't have Bibles, they didn't have scriptures to be able to follow, and the teachings were done in the synagogues or wherever they could get a crowd of people to know and understand what life should be like if you wanted to be able to receive your reward, which would be heaven, of course. Why don't we go look at one of the ones that was possibly the most difficult theologically to paint. I mention that because each time I would come to see Joyce on a Tuesday, she would look at me and say, do you think this one tells the story that Jesus told? And I would look at it and say, I'm not sure. And then before I could blink, she'd taken her brush and painted the whole thing out. <laughs> and this happened three times. Mm -hmm. Finally, we took a break. It was actually over October. I'd gone away for a, some three weeks. You had an mm -hmm. exhibition. Yeah. And when we got back that Tuesday morning, we sat down and she said, let's pray that I can be inspired on how to represent the story. It's the parable of the wicked tenants where Jesus was foretelling his death to come. And that's the parable over there. Let's go and take a look. Maybe you can talk sure. about how you yes. came to. Okay. This is my favorite of all of the paintings. And this is the one that Alex is talking about. I kept painting these people up here that, he, that Christ was telling the story about. I kept painting them like this. And they were solid people, but they aren't. They were just an illusion. They were a story that Christ was telling. 
So because of it being a story, these had to be like they were transparent. And here's the two men that leased the vineyard, and even these little buildings back there are part of the scripture. And uh, if when you read that scripture, you will see every detail, including the rocks, everything that's here. The first two servants were sent to collect half of the bounty of the vineyard. That's what they were going to do. And uh, so the two guys that had leased the vineyard killed them. One is holding a knife, the other one is slicing his throat, and this one's already dead down on the ground. So the owner of the vineyard, who had gone away to a, a far country to live, said, well, I'll send three of my servants because there's no, uh, surely they will, there's only two guys, the three servants will certainly be able to collect my part of the, of the uh, profit of the vineyard. So they sent three, and these same two men are right there, dressed the same as they were, and they're killing all three of the men. And they did. This one's dead, this one's in the process of being killed, and that one is being in the process. Now the way I painted this was to paint it pretty much solid as a vineyard, and then go over it with a little bit of white where I wanted the figures to be, and then I took a marking pen, and I suggested the anatomy of the figures that I used there so that it looked like an illusion. That's what I, that was what the Holy Spirit was trying to tell me, was that I needed this to look like an illusion. Then he said, the owner said, if I send my son, surely they will respect my son and give him what is due. So they, he sent his son and they hung him on a cross. That's Jesus Christ up there. And here's the skull, Golgotha, which that's what it means, the place of the skull. And uh, that is actually, the face is in that mountain and seen today for anybody that goes to the Holy Land, anybody. They can see that the eyes and the nose and the mouth suggested in the side of the mountain where Christ was hung. One of the parts I remember most of this particular painting is every now and again Joyce would say to me, Alex, what do you think of the painting? Now I've written software all my life. I wouldn't know which end of a paintbrush to hold. And I would look at her and I would say, Joyce, after nearly 80 years of professional painting, how can you ask me to comment on your painting? And she would laugh and say, but you can, because you can tell me whether it tells the story. And on this particular one, here on the top, I actually said to her, you know, Choice, I don't think we've got that quite right. Sure enough, out came the paintbrush, one, two, three, it was all wiped out again, <laughs> because it was right. The ground needed to slope away with the picture of Jerusalem in the background, and when we looked at the original painting that she'd done of that particular scene, she immediately said, yes, that's right, and it got corrected, and so I, I'd like to say I contributed a little bit to at least <laughs> one of them. <laughs> I also have to point out here, there's a Sadducee and a Pharisee, both of them religious leaders of the Jewish community at that time, and they thought they were perfect. And, but they were trying to find something that they could pin on Jesus so they could get him killed or they could do something about it. And these are 12 of the apostles, and every single head is either facing a, a different way or it's different. This man is talking to this man. This one is turned around looking over his shoulder. And all of these are looking in a different direction, just like human beings would look. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's why this one is my favorite, because it tells the story. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for everything. So going back to where we started, this is the painting that came out of the very first meeting Joyce and I had at that sermon in April of 2016. This is my daughter Stephanie, and she is meeting Jesus. The painting of Jesus, in fact, comes from the famous painting she has, Joyce has, called Jesus and the Sparrow. The feather in the hand of Jesus is, in fact, a real feather. Um, a few months before Stephanie died, 
she said to me that she would always leave a feather for me. And one morning I was sitting at breakfast and I looked and there was this feather lying on the table. I took a photograph and I texted it to her saying, Steph, is this the kind of feather you meant? And she said yes. And so I had a photograph of the feather. This picture of the clouds here, in fact, is a photograph I took of the clouds in Scotland. Some three days after she died, I was walking with my mother and I looked into the sky and this picture of an angel in these clouds had followed us for about three hours. And so I took a picture of that. And then finally this painting there of um, her son Bob. Shortly before he died, he had come to Joyce with uh, a scripture from Ephesians saying that he saw himself as a warrior for God and had written an article to Joyce saying, I am God's warrior. And she had painted this picture of him with him in the soldier's uniform. And so as we got together in the weeks leading up to this painting being done and we decided what to assemble, I think we have some eight or nine different drawings before we finally settled on this particular composition and then Joyce painted it. It hangs in my office where it gives me inspiration as I, as I work and write and continue to put together this 12-step program. This painting helps me to know that she is with me in spirit, although I can't see her. And I know it gives Joyce a lot of comfort to know that as I walk, she is with her son Bob and we can do this together. It's very, very special to me.